What's up guys and welcome to my video. This video is one of my favourite ones to do. This is the PC centric rig. If you don't know what that is, that's basically the best sort of PC you can get. Not from a necessarily really, really budget um, perspective, not from a really expensive perspective, but kind of just the sort of PC that if I was going to go out and I was going to buy a PC with sensible money that was going to get me loads and loads of gaming performance, then this is the one I would choose. If at any point throughout the video you're wondering why a piece of my eyebrow is missing, it may be because I lost a game of FIFA. Moving on. Now, as always, to kick us off, we're going to start with the case. The case is always um, something that's very, very personal, and it's something that, while well, I'm going to go and recommend what I would buy, it is the sort of thing that do go and have a look and choose your own. Um, the one I'm going to suggest is the Corsair 300R, and this is the one with the windowed side panel. Now all Corsair cases are really friendly to build in. This one in particular is quite nice because it's not necessarily a really cheap budget case and it's not obviously a really expensive one either. But the build materials are all solid, it's very friendly to build within and it's a case that looks nice as well. Now for this medium-ish sort of size case, it's a standard ATX motherboard we're going to put in. Now whenever you're building a PC, you've always got to think future-proof. What am I going to want to do with this PC maybe in about a year's time? And I always say you're going to probably want to put another graphics card in there. So this one supports Crossfire and obviously uh, that probably is a hint to the fact that we've gone with an AMD graphics card later. Now this motherboard is by Gigabyte and it's the GAZ78HT3. This motherboard is one of the more budget sort of motherboards but to be honest there's not really nothing wrong with that as long as it supports all the things you need it to support. It's got Crossfire X support but it doesn't have SLI support so we are going to go with an AMD graphics card. It's got plenty of USB 3 ports and it's got plenty of headers as well as having plenty of SATA ports. There's not really that much else that you're going to need in this sort of thing really. You can always get a standalone sound card if you think you're going to want to get a high end set of speakers anyway. And other than that there's not that much wrong with it to be honest, you're not going to gain that much from a higher end board. From price performance, you're just it's really not worth getting an expensive motherboard to be honest at all. Now the easiest bit of these rigs at the moment is always the processor. And that's because the i5 is just the best processor out there from a price performance perspective. For gaming it's absolutely ace. And it is of course the i5 4670 Haswell processor. Unless you have a stupid amount of graphics horsepower in there, it's not going to bottleneck everything. It's going to perform well in all your games and of course everything else you want to do with your PC as well. It is a quad core and that is the minimum really um, you need for a medium high end PC. Obviously if you're going budget a dual core will suffice but a quad core is the ideal. Now moving on to the RAM, it is sadly getting more expensive as the years go on. The last time I bought some RAM it cost me about £40 for an 8GB set. Uh, these days you're looking at near a double that and you can get RAM cheaper than the one I'm about to suggest but it's about five, ten pounds, dollars cheaper and it's really kind of not worth it. So the RAM I've chosen is Vengeance Pro and this is the Vengeance Pro RAM that's running at 1866 megahertz. What does this mean? Well it means your PC is going to be slightly faster. Don't go thinking it's going to be amazingly faster because it's not. But it is faster than the 1600 megahertz RAM you can get and hopefully as time goes on uh, programs are going to be more efficient at using the higher frequency RAM. Now if you're going to overclock your processor, you're going to want to get a standalone cooler. If you're not that worried about it, it is the sort of thing you can upgrade to later, so if you are trying to cut down a bit, then forget about this bit, it's not completely essential. But by having a CPU cooler, it means you're going to usually have a cooler and quieter running PC. Now the cooler I'd recommend is by Corsair and it is the H60. In the UK I believe it's called the 2013 edition, so if you can find one that says 2013 edition, uh, get that, but it doesn't really make that much difference. It's quite a quiet and efficient little CPU cooler. Now the H60 is a water cooler which is more efficient than an air cooler. Usually is quite quieter as well. Now this is a factory sealed unit and the chances of it leaking are quite slim. When I say quite slim I mean you know very slim. Don't expect it to happen because it's unlikely. Now the most exciting bit of course is the graphics card. So at this price point you pretty much have a choice between an AMD 270X and a GTX 760. The GTX 760 performs a little bit better, but it is more expensive than the 270X. In the US the prices are a bit closer, so it's a bit more difficult to judge, so do go and look at the 760 as well. But in the UK the 270X is pretty much uh, the better option at the moment. So in this rig we're going to put a 270X. 
The 270X will blitz through all the games you can have for the foreseeable future, and as I've said, the motherboard and the PSU, which I'll talk about in a minute, all support Crossfire, and you can just stick another one in there in a year or two's time when you can get one significantly cheaper and you'll have an extremely powerful rig. Next up is the power supply and I would recommend going with a Corsair 750 watt and this is the CX series and it's a modular one. The fact that this power supply is modular means it's going to be a lot easier to manage all the cables and it's actually going to be easier to install in the first place. Now the reason I've gone for a 750 watt is because looking ahead if you're going to want to put um, these cards in Crossfire which you more than likely will because you'll be able to get a card really cheap in a year or two um, then you're going to need a system that supports it and the power supply is one of those things that you're going to need to support it. Put a 750 watt in there, it's quite a good price anyway um, it's, not, it's going to cost you maybe slightly uh, more, about £20, 30-ish dollars more than if you'd just gone for the power supply that would only support one card but for the sake of $30, if you do it now um, you're not going to want to throw your power supply away anytime soon anyway and it's going to support um, your decision um, to put a second card in there later which being future proof I would say you should do. Now other than the graphics card the most important component in a PC these days for me and most people that have ever used one is a solid state drive or SSD. 128 gig should do you fine, you put your operating system on it and then you've still got room for four or five games on there as well. We've gone for a Corsair GS series and this is quite a budget one but it's a budget one that still performs really really well and your system's going to boot up in no time and it's going to open up all your games and programs in no time as well. SSD is a must unless you're on a really really tight budget. Seriously get an SSD, they're brilliant. In conjunction with that SSD we've gone for a one terabyte hard drive. So this is just a standard hard drive and this is a Western Digital Blue. They are extremely cheap and for a terabyte of storage that's going to store all the games you need there's not really any reason to store more than one terabyte of games because that's pretty much going to be nearly your whole Steam library anyway and deleting and installing doesn't really take that long anyway. So one terabyte in conjunction with the SSD is all you're going to need. You shouldn't need any more than that. Now lastly, stick a DVD drive in there. They cost about £10, £12, $20. Will you use one? Maybe but they're dirt cheap and unless you know you're definitely not going to use one you should be getting one. Of course you can stick a Blu-ray drive if you think you're going to watch movies on there. They're a bit more expensive but about £40, $50, that's up to you, your decision. And that is it for the PC. Of course you're going to need to stick a copy of Windows on there unless you want to put SteamOS or something on there but you, you want to put Windows on there trust me. That's going to cost you about £70, $100 so if you are looking at different parts don't forget that you're going to need to put Windows on there. Uh, that is something that you quite often forget and if you look at system builders, some of the less well known ones that try and um, get their name out there by having a low price don't often include an operating system. Um, so beware of that catch. So how much does this thing cost altogether? If you've watched these videos before then you'll probably know uh, the sort of price range it is. This one costs £880 in the UK and in the US it costs $1050. Disclaimer as usual, these prices were not quickly found but they weren't extensively uh, researched either. Uh, prices were all from Scan uh, UK in the UK. Uh, they accept Bitcoin now. If you've got Bitcoins, get a PC with Bitcoin, why not? Um, over in the US, prices were taken from Newegg and Amazon. Uh, but write down the parts if you think you want any of these parts. Uh, obviously, I recommend them. And just do some shopping around and see uh, which is the best place to get them. If you have any questions, as usual, leave them in the comments below. They're always appreciated. Um, as I was doing this list, someone emailed me um, about a question. I answered it. I'm a nice guy like that. I uh, tend to. If I ever don't, it is because I'm really busy. I'm sorry. But if you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, they're normally useful for everyone. Um, if it's more personal, um, then just send me a private message on uh, YouTube. Just click send a message. I believe it's that simple. Um, and obviously don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. If you haven't really seen this channel before, it focuses on gaming, focuses on PC and technology in general. And that's about it, unless of course uh, you dislike the video. Sorry about that guys. Is it the eyebrow? I know, uh, probably shouldn't accept that there, sorry. Um, yeah, so click the dislike and do leave a comment below if you dislike the video. Um, just tell me why and say, well, I thought this was rubbish because of this um, and then I will be able to improve for next time.
Of course, like the video if you thought, yeah, it's been useful, I'm going to go get some of these parts. Okay, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.